What's up guys, this is Nick Wisdom with Heli Direct with a little quick tip about capacitor backups. Now this is the new ZTW25 Farad backup and it works similarly to the Pulse units, uh, the X-Guard units, they all follow a similar pattern. Now, if you are a Mikado V-Controller, V-Bar user, and you have seen some of the capacitor backups with integration where they're triggered on and off with a switch and be like, wow, that's cool. I wanna show you how easy it is to use these less expensive versions uh, to do the same thing. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is I have a Hobbywing 180 speed control here. We're gonna go ahead and plug that into a flight battery here uh, to get that going. We're gonna take the ESC lead from that, plug it into the ESC lead that's gonna go ahead and power up our Evo. I'm gonna go ahead, turn on my V-Control Evo here. It's gonna go ahead and connect, which you can see by the green light here, to our flybarless unit. Now, I'm gonna take this capacitor back up here. You can see there's no lights on it here, indicating there's no power. And we're gonna plug it into the AUX2 output of our flybarless unit, just like that. And you can see there's still no lights on it, okay? So it's not being powered by the flybarless unit currently. So this is how fast and easy it is to get your capacitor backup to be activated on a switch, any switch from your V-Control transmitter. Very similar process for any other radio. So you're just assigning a basic on-off mix to a switch um, to the output of your flybarless unit. So I'm gonna show you this with a V-Control, but this would work whether you're using Spectrum, Icon, Rotor Flight, you know, any number. You're basically just assigning a switch to a specific channel of your radio. So in the V-Control, you go down to Model Setup. We're gonna go to Macro Cell Setup here. And then we're gonna go to Edit Macro Cells. We're gonna go to 7 Aux 2, hit Select. Right now it says Original. Gonna go ahead and press that and we want it to be a trigger which is an on or off so it's set to trigger and on a v control anyway if you want to identify the switch just move it you can see it's option three and i'm going to uh select for input signal i'm gonna scroll down to switch option three and there we go. Now you can see right now in the motor off position, it's showing me a negative 125, meaning off. Motor on. Now it shows me a positive 125 and the bar color changed to green. And it's on. I'm going to go off. ahead and switch it back off. Close out of all this. It's really that simple. Now, coming back to our capacitor backup, you can see in the motor off position, there are no lights on. Motor on. Switch it to motor on. You can see it starts to blink, meaning it's charging the capacitors off of the flight battery and now it's fully charged and fully lit up. Go ahead and do your full flight, and with your done, go ahead and shut your motor off with the same switch, motor off. and you'll notice the capacitor will turn itself off. It's just that simple. By the way, the other option for your macro cell, I'm gonna go back to edit macro cells, aux two, is you can also do it on your motor safety switch. So you can see that's option one, switch it to switch option one so now if i go to auto rotate and go into hold motor idle, motor idle, motor idle, motor it's not affected i can do anything i want there so if i want to reset my esc doesn't do that but when i turn my motor safety switch so that the motor is able to run it charges and at the end of the flight when i turn it off it will disable so or you can put it on an entirely different switch independent of any action on the radio just want to show you a couple of options and by the way, to demonstrate this in action, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug my flight battery. So flight battery unplugged, you can see that the Neo continues to be powered. Capacitor is there. So now I could be driving my servos around without the uh, main power from the flight battery and the helicopter will safely land. And then when I do switch the motor off and it instantly shuts off the capacitor backup, just that simple. And you can see as soon as I did that, capacitor killed power to the Neo and I've disconnected from the model. For those of you wondering, why do I need one of these uh, capacitor backups? This is about the smallest size you'd ever use. So typically on a helicopter size 550 and larger, you might wanna consider a capacitor backup. And what it does is, right now our flight battery is plugged into our ESC and through the BEC or battery eliminator circuit output, it is powering our flybarless unit, right? This is how the flybarless gets power. But what happens if your flight battery comes unplugged, there's a problem with your flight battery, your ESC has a failure, highly unlikely, but they do happen from time to time. Uh, essentially, you lose power to the helicopter and instantly crash. Now, in this situation, if your flight battery comes unplugged, your BEC fails, 
this capacitor backup charged off your flight battery will power your fly barless unit for about 30 to 45 seconds, uh, which will let you safely auto rotate it down. So it won't power the motor, so it won't spin the blades. You do have to know how to auto rotate, but it will let you guide the model towards the ground safely and gently in those final 30 seconds before it loses power. And it's just that simple. Again, these ETW backup units, similar in price to the Pulse units, they're in between $30 and $35. Uh, for the 25 Farad, I think it's around $32 currently. Um, and there's a variety of options. Similar setup, by the way, for the X-Guard units, come in a variety of sizes as well. Uh, we sell them under uh, ZTW, Pulse, and X-Guard here at HeliDirect. All right, this has been uh, a quick tip with Nick Wisdom at HeliDirect.